Hello, welcome everybody to RVCM at Outside. I'm gonna pop my mask off because I am outside and I'm a good six feet away from our special guest who I'll introduce in a minute. So welcome to RVCM at Outside. My name is Liz Crocker and I work on the learning team at the Royal BC Museum. And um, thank you for joining us for this special Lunar New Year edition of RVCM Outside. And um, I would like to acknowledge right away that we are on the territory of the Lekwungen speaking people, the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nation. And as ever, I'm so glad to be able to work here and thankful and grateful to be able to work and uh, learn and play in this beautiful, beautiful place. Um, so the program today is live outside and uh, we're gonna have maybe a little bit of street noise. We're webinar format, so you can write your questions or comments in the chat window. And also, if you're joining us on Facebook, you can you can put questions there on Facebook. And my colleague Jenny is in the Zoom room, and she can help uh, make sure we get comments and questions from both places. And we're going to try to save time at the end for questions. Um, and I want to also tell you about the next program. So we do these RBCM at outsides. Uh, every two weeks at two o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday, and then we record them. So you can see them all. They're all on our YouTube playlist. And uh, so if you don't get to see all of this one, you can always go back later and you can share them. And the next program we have is on February the 24th, and it's with Heidi Gartner, who is the Invertebrates Collections Manager at the Royal BC Museum. And she and I are gonna be at a local wharf, not sure where yet. And we're gonna be talking about fouling communities, which I had never heard of, which are, um, artificial communities or animals, communities of animals, organisms that start up on artificial submerged material like at wharfs and buoys and ropes that are under the water, usually in harbors. And so those can lead to all kinds of really interesting dynamic communities. Um, so we're gonna be having a look at that on February 24th. Join us if you can. All right, so it is February 10th and on February 12th, it is Lunar New Year. Um, which is a very uh, big day that is celebrated by many people around the world, including here in BC and Victoria. And so I have two guests with me today. I have Dr. Zui Chung in the room, nice and cozy, warm. Maybe you can put your camera on Hi, and say hello. Are you able to do that? And we can see your face maybe for a minute. Yep, they can see her. Oh, can you? Okay. Oh, you've spotlit my video, so I can't see her. Hi, Zui. Thank you for joining us. So. Zoe's going to be in the room and she has some um, slides that she'll be showing as we go along. But my special guest today is uh, a gentleman who knows this area quite intimately. And uh, it is uh, Mr. Alan Lowe, who is an architect and the former mayor of Victoria. And he's going to be taking us on a tour of uh, part of Victoria's Chinatown and uh, sort of explaining his connection and memories of some of the places that we're gonna see. So I'm so excited about this. And what, so what I'm gonna do, so I have, let's see if I can get Alan this way. Oh, there he is way off. And so, um, Yay. <laughs> so I'm, what I'm gonna do is flip my camera around, pop my mask back on, and it'll mostly be Alan on the camera, but I'll be able to help with uh, questions or comments, but try to save them to the end, unless there's something really pressing as we go along, because I have a feeling Alan has more to say than we can get to by 2.30. So uh, we're gonna give it a go. So uh, yes, I'm gonna flip the camera around. Um, hang on a second, Alan, I'll let you know. Pop my mouth, there we go. Okay, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us on this cold day. You're very welcome, Liz. <laughs> and for all those out there that are nice and warm in front of their computers, uh, hi from Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've been asked to say a little bit about uh, uh, Lunar New Year as well as Victoria's Chinatown and my personal experiences here uh, in Victoria's Chinatown. I was born and raised here in Victoria, so I do have a little bit of history um, in Victoria and Chinatown. And we're standing right here in Limong Khao Wei. Limong Khao Wei was actually dedicated uh, in 2005 uh, after the CRD building was opened and this passageway between Centennial Square City Hall, and, um, which leads right down towards the Chinese public school. The Chinese public school that you can see behind me um, was built in 1912. And when the school was built, uh, there was a lot of discrimination here in Victoria and the Chinese were not allowed to go to the regular school. So they, they built a school so that the Chinese could come here and learn so that they could actually attend 
uh, the, the regular schools uh, as they uh, learn some English. Uh, Li Wang Kao, however, was the first principal of the school, and that's why Li Wang Kao Wei was uh, established here in 2005 uh, with a ceremony with his granddaughter and his great granddaughter coming to attend. So that was very, 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 um, very great uh, day that we had here in Victoria. As we start walking, um, and I guess I'm going to be walking backwards. <laughs> you don't uh, have to. You don't okay, have to. I don't have to. Um, I'm going to show you a mural. And there's a mural in front of the Centennial Parkade, and that is of the Li Wang Kao family. And you can see uh, some of their, um, what, how, what they wore back then, and, uh, and, and, and seeing the, the family of Li Wang Kao. We're going to walk down Fiskard Street. And as we start walking down this part uh, across from the CRD building, you will see the building on my on the right hand side of the street, which is the Ji Tuk Tong building. Uh, that building is important in a few ways. Uh, number one, it used to be a two story building with a cheater floor. So uh, as you can see the red awning right above there, that's a that's a cheater floor that has a six foot high ceiling. Uh, the the city did not uh, actually um, make the owners pay property taxes for that portion of the building because it was only six feet high. Um, in back about thirty years ago, I was the architect that actually uh, renovated this building, and you will see on the two on two thirds of that building, we've got a second floor now where there are windows. What we did was we lowered the ground floor so that we still had enough height on the ground floor. And on the second floor, we actually made it high enough so that we have offices there. And that that center portion was actually uh, my first architectural office in our city. So uh, that's where I was located. As we walk further down the street, we'll see other buildings that are that belong to uh, various associations uh, in. In Victoria's Chinatown, we had many different associations, and these associations actually uh, were created to assist those that were immigrating to Canada, and they didn't know uh, how to, uh, I guess, integrate into the society, and they needed some help, needed some protection, and they needed uh, to understand how to um, integrate into the community. So, as you can see across the street, the taller building is the Lee Benevolent Association building. And right next to it is the Shong Yi Benevolent Association building. And the Shong Yi uh, Benevolent Association is quite interesting from my point of view because for the first three years of my life, I actually lived um, in the on the second floor right there looking out towards Fiskard Street. So that was where I was, well, I wasn't born there. I was born at the Royal Jubilee Hospital, but uh, that, uh, on the second floor was where I lived for the, for, for the first three years of my life. Now I was going to ask you about traffic, but you probably wouldn't remember it back then. That was a while ago. And I forgot to mention, I apologize, Alan Lowe is also the chair of the board of the Victoria Chinatown Museum Society. So That's right. Kind of notable. Forgot to mention that. Sorry about that. Um, so while we're looking at this, I, I just want to look at the back behind the Ji Tuk Hong building that we were looking at. You'll see the brick buildings back there. Uh, those are actually tenement buildings that they had in the past where they were very small rooms and they housed many, many people uh, of the Chinese community. And now uh, they're, they're actually um, uh, rental uh, units there at the back. Okay, we're going to move along this side street so a bit further towards the gate of harmonious interest. But before we get there, uh, we're going to focus on the QB Bakery. The QV Bakery right there um, used to be a Chevron gas station. And uh, the, the person that created the QV Bakery was Vincent Kwan. And what he wanted to do was he wanted to create a cafe and a coffee house. And uh, for those that may remember, there was this famous uh, person uh, selling coffee uh, on uh, commercials, and his name was Qua, was Juan Valdez. Well, with a play of words, Vincent Quan uh, named this QB for Quan Valdez. <laughs> so we're going to come down the street, 
and we're going to head towards the gate of harmonious interest. The gate of harmonious interest was actually uh, donated to the city of Victoria by the, our sister city uh, of Suzhou um, in, in China. The gate of harmonious interest was uh, erected in 1981 and we had to refurbish it in 1996 because the the, the roof tiles were actually falling down and we had to re refurbish it. You'll also see two lines at the corner of the various, uh, of the gates. And there's uh, one line that's a female line and the other line is a male line. The way that we know that is the female lion has a cub right beside her. Oh, I walked past that so many times okay. and never noticed. And that. then we're going to actually just focus on that building down the street on Government Street. Uh, that building there is the Tom Goon Temple. And that is uh, where a lot of the Chinese go up to, uh, to the temple to, uh, to, to offer their offerings. And uh, it's also um, run by an association. And what they do is they, they upkeep that, that temple that is uh, there. Um, it's, if you have an opportunity to come and visit it, uh, it's, uh, it's open to the public and they welcome you to come. And the access is right on the front there? The access is in the front and you have to walk up uh, to the third floor because the temple is on the highest level, uh, closest, to the, closest to the heavens. And there are a lot of uh, Chinese, uh, the Chinese communities that actually do go up there and they're in their 80s and 90s and they walk up uh, the, the flights of stairs just wow. to do that. We don't have elevators, never did have elevators, and it's uh, very healthy to, to, right. to have the exercise. That's right, there you go. Um, if you want to just uh, pan your camera towards Government Street where the Shizen um, Japanese restaurant is, that used to be the Peking House restaurant that we all used to go to. Uh, Augustine Lowe used to own that. Um, as we continue to go down across the street. Conley's Market here uh, has been a mainstay in our community for a long time. Um, during one of the Halloween sessions where everybody used to come down to Chinatown to buy fireworks, uh, there was a fire and uh, some of the fireworks actually went off. Uh, we had a big fire here and this building got reconstructed. So when you, as we walk down the street here, you'll see the oh, lion the with the cub. Yeah, I've never noticed that it was so different. That, that is the female lion. Okay, so we're just gonna walk down the street a bit further. And uh, I still remember, and actually it's behind that big truck. So we'll have to walk a little bit further and we'll see a bit more of it. Uh, right here used to be Tommy's Grocery which was closely related to Kwan Lee's grocery store and uh, another place where we would all come down uh, and fire fireworks uh, during Halloween when we were allowed to uh, fire them off. This building with the red door is the Dark Coon Club building. It's the Dark Coon Club of Canada. Uh, it's their, their, um, their main association headquarters on the second floor and third floor is where they have their social club and uh, many of the uh, elderly pre-COVID would be up there playing Mahjong. Uh, if you take a look across the street right now, uh, you will see that where, where there's that white uh, band, um, that used to be the Embassy Cafe. Uh, that used to be a place where my dad used to take me down uh, for, for their special uh, butter tarts. They had some egg custard tarts as well. Uh, they used, it used to be owned and run by the Chow family. Uh, I went to school with Kenny Chow and Julie. And um, so that was a, a place that we would come to all the time. If we would pan around to the Loising uh, barbecue pork shop, which is the, mm -hmm. the red awning next to the red umbrellas. Uh, that, for those that don't know, is the oldest uh, Chinese operated business in North America. So that's why we think that Victoria Chinatown being a national historic site as well uh, should, should continue to keep the uh, establishments that have been open for such a long time. And what we have in the Loising market, uh, Barking Park market is so important to keep alive. And I encourage people to come down and, and try their barbecue pork, uh, try their try their duck, uh, try their uh, roast pork. Um, it's all inside that little uh, 
little shop and uh, you'll, you'll be able to see Shelly and Daniel in there. Uh, right next to it, which is the Fiskard Market right now, used to be the Morley's. And Morley's used to be run by two gentlemen uh, that uh, actually used to be employees there. Their names were Hank and Frank. I used to come down here and see them a lot because my parents used to would, would come down here. Uh, they they uh, were from the same uh, same area in China that my, my parents came from and descendants from those areas. So uh, that used to be Morley's Market. Um, where Shanghai City is right now, that restaurant up there, that, that used to be Sun Lock and Wong's uh, restaurant. And uh, further down the street, Don Mee's restaurant. So this row had a lot of restaurants that we used to uh, hang out and go to. And uh, there are still many of them that we still go to now. We're gonna head down here to the famous Fantan Alley that people uh, all know about. And I'm just gonna interrupt for a second. Uh, we've also got Dr. Uh, Tsui Chung in the room. Tsui, is this a good time to show some of your slides? So some of the things we've already seen or would you like to wait? Oh, you're muted. Alan has a lot more to say. Let him speak. He's okay. our celebrity okay. guest. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. So, so as we enter Fantan Alley, uh, you can see that uh, we, we have an exhibit at the end of Fantan Alley, which is an exhibit that was a partnership between the Victoria Chinatown Museum Society, the Royal British Col Columbia Museum, as well as a salient group. And it's called Peering into the Past. And as we start walking down the uh, Fantan Alley, which is uh, a, a very narrow alley, uh, it, we, we just wonder what was actually even behind these walls and if only these walls could have talked. Oh yeah. <laughs> and look at that, we've got snow on Alan's jacket. This is, this is our first RBCM outside in the snow. So. so as you can see, there are, there are windows everywhere, there are small doors everywhere, there are passageways along Fantan Alley. And, and when you look at Fantan Alley, um, Fantan Alley was named after a Chinese gambling game called Fantan. And what they had behind these walls were, were probably the clubs where people were gambling because back then, uh, you have to remember, uh, a lot of the Chinese men came to Canada to uh, make a better life for themselves so that they could provide for their family back home in China. And once they were able to make uh, their money, uh, they, they would be able to bring some of their family over to Canada. And so when the men were finished work during the day, uh, there was nothing to do. So they would socialize, they would, you know, they, they would play their, their games, they would play cards, they, they would play mahjong. And there was a little bit of gambling involved. Uh, I understand there might have been some opium in here as well, but you know th those things were happening. There were, there were doorways all over the place. Uh, most of these buildings were all built in uh, the early 1900s, and you'll see the nice brick facades with with the uh, the nice arch windows, uh, the wooden storefronts that are all along here. And uh, Fantan Alley has become a destination in the city of Victoria. If you take a look at this building to my right here, uh, this building is owned by the Hoi San Association. Uh, it's made up of three different buildings. And about uh, 10 years ago, uh, this building was actually about to fall, fall down. Uh, there were holes in the roof and there's water coming in. And as the architect, I, we actually worked with the Hoi San Association with Paul Chan, who was the president and is still the president right now. And what we did was we, we renovated it and we added two stories to, to this building, which from the alley, you really can't see, which is one of the things that we're very proud of so that we could maintain the, uh, the uniqueness of the facades. Um, we, we now have um, rental apartments all on the second, third and fourth floors of this building. We have uh, storefronts along the, the main floor and it's become uh, quite the building uh, for the Hoi San Association. As we go, go down this way to the Pandora side of Fantan Alley, um, we will approach the pop-up exhibit that the Royal BC Museum 
and the Victoria Chinatown Museum Society worked on together uh, in conjunction with the Salient Group. So we're going to be entering through these this this archway, and as you can see at the end here uh, is our pop up museum. Uh, this pop up museum was opened in July uh, on July twenty fourth of this year, or, or last year now, twenty twenty, and uh, it exhibits the. Uh, Chinese Lantern from the Freemason Society. Uh, the Freemason Society is, um, is one of the oldest societies here in Victoria and uh, is one of the oldest societies in, in Canada. Uh, we also have a fire insurance map of Chinatown from 1891. And at that time, uh, Chinatown was more or less about six blocks in nature. And today, uh, Chinatown is only about one, one and a half blocks long. Um, I, I, I'd like to talk a little bit about Chinese New Year and the lunar calendar. Um, this year is the year of the ox. Uh, last year was year, the year of the rat. Uh, we're just very happy that the year of the rat has passed by um, <laughs> with COVID and all. And we're looking much more forward to the year of the ox which is this year, starting on, uh, on Friday, February the 12th. Um, the Year of the Ox is a very important year because it's my year as well. And in the, zo in the Chinese zodiac, the, everything comes in 12 year cycles. There's 12 animals in, in the zodiac, and this year coming up just happens to be the Year of the Ox. Uh, the Year of the Ox or Ox Year people are supposed to be very diligent, they're dependable, uh, they're very hardworking, but they can be a little bit stubborn. Um, some traits that- Is that true? We may have. <laughs> um, in conjunction with every, every 12 year cycle, there's also uh, five elements that people look at with respect to the Chinese Zodiac. And the five elements are fire, wood, metal, uh, water, and earth. Uh, this is the metal ox year, and the metal ox year comes every 60 years. So I'm a metal ox as well, which means I'll be 60 this year, and anybody born this year will also be a metal ox, and they will have the same characteristics and traits as, as I do as well. Uh, every year uh, during Chinese New Year, you would see a lot of schools bringing their their, their students down here to understand about the Chinese culture and celebrating Chinese New Year. Unfortunately, because of COVID-19, uh, the, the streets are empty. Uh, there's hardly anybody down here and it's not because of the snow, it's just because of COVID. Um, so we're hoping that when this and we'll enjoy our Chinatown. Um, the Victoria Chinese Ch Chinatown Museum Society uh, has been established for about a year and a half now. We're working very hard with our partners to actually create a museum here in Victoria so that we can showcase the history of the Chinese community in Victoria. Um, due to the fact that we have a uh, national historic site in, in our uh, in our Chinatown and with all the well-preserved uh, buildings and the history that we have here, we actually have a living museum that is outside. Uh, the museum space that we want to have in the future, will, which will be you know, inside the four walls, that will only be a, a part of our museum because the rest of the museum is outside those doors along Pandora, uh, I mean, along Fiskard Street as I've just shown you uh, just some highlights of what uh, we, we have here, which we're very proud to share with the community. Yeah, the, the history here is so dense in such a small, small area. It is, yeah. and unfortunately, a lot of the people that were here back, you know, eight, 70, 80, 90 years ago, uh, many of those uh, have passed on and we need to get some of those stories uh, documented so that we could preserve them and we could save them for, for, our, for our heritage. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I know Dr. Zui Chung, I'll bring her up again, but she worked on some uh, material for our learning portal that Jenny has put some links in there and there are some interviews 
um, with some some elders in the community in there as well. And also there is a copy of that beautiful uh, fire insurance map that Alan referenced on that in the learning portal as well. Thanks, Jenny, for popping up those links. Um, Thank you so much, Alan. Liz, uh, can you uh, yes. flip around to show the images on the window? Right there. I will do anything you say. Go up, so, up. There we go. Yeah, that just goes, uh, that just brings back um, to where you started. That was, this is the Limongo oh. children. Oh, that is so beautiful. Yes, uh, those are archival photos from the RBC Museum and uh, they and Robert Fung, who is from the Sejian Group, uh, who owns this building, essentially wanted to uh, put some uh, pictures uh, that that related to to yes. our exhibit, which so, was great. Yeah, I wonder if if that mural that you showed us at the beginning was based on this photo. Uh, it wasn't, but uh, some they are of separate those, photos. Yeah, separate photos. Some of those okay. people are the same people in that mirror. Okay. All right, Zui, now's your chance. You have any archival photos to show us? I, I know just, we're, uh, we're I will go really quick um, to say yeah. that um, the places. How do I share? Just a you second. can share. And while Zui's doing that, if anybody has any questions, I know we've got lots of people in the room. While we've got Alan Lowe with us here, I'm sure he'd love to answer some questions. Zui's just getting her screen up. I hope you're all nice and, and warm <laughs> inside your houses and your offices. Watching Somebody in front is of the sour. <laughs> and your schools, we've got a number of schools joining us today, which is fantastic. So uh, where <laughs> Ellen and Liz started was the very important site that where actually where Chinese community started. So you can see this is where they, this is actually where they started. And then this is where Gate was, was the earliest businesses that set up in the Gold Rush era in the 18, um, in 1858. And this image is from 1866 to 70. And um, this is Li Gao here, right? And these are all leading Chinese merchants in 1904. And this is uh, the opening of the Chinese public school. It was called the Great Qing um, School. And um, Li Mong Gao was the first principal, and he's right here, if you can see. And this is the first graduating school, uh, class from 1915. And Li Mong Gao as the, the, the principal is here. And um, and uh, the children that you just saw in the in the courtyard, um, like this is how the two elders look like after they grew up a little bit more. Oh. And uh, this is where uh, Alan was talking about um, Lai Sing Guan, the oldest continuous uh, Chinese owned business in North America. Um, so this is uh, where they are today, but this is the archival photo of where they were before. And that's the children from the Chinese public school. And inside uh, the butcher shop, this is um, the their original business sign from 1889. Mm. Okay, so that's it. Okay, thank you, sharing. Zui. Thank you. You can stop sharing your slides. Thank you so much. Um, I did see a question go across from our friends at the Dorchester in Kelowna, and they were wondering how old is Victoria's Chinatown? Victoria's Chinatown. 1858. Thank you, Tui. 1858. <laughs> Thank you, Tui. A to that is for the West Coast for buildings. It's actually the oldest surviving Chinatowns in North America because San Francisco's got um, burned. So they had rebuilt. And ours is like never, never had that. So you have a lot of original structure and like uh, um, people like uh, Ellen and some other, other people in Heritage, they, they work really hard to preserve the facade. Thank you, Tui. Any other questions there, Jenny? I know we're, I think we're down at 2.30 now, but we can go a few minutes over. I'm sure <laughs> Alan won't mind freezing for a few minutes for questions. <laughs> we do, um, not any more questions. We do have some comments. One was from Kim that says, I want to knit you a scarf, Alan. <laughs> which is nice. <laughs> um, we also have um, on Facebook, um, Irvin um, said the Embassy Cafe was owned by my uncle Henry Chow. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you for joining us. And we also have my, per um, my parental grandfather, Dick Chu, 
I believe, uh, or originally opened on Mies in 1940s. Oh. Lots of history here. Yeah. And so glad everybody could join us. Any others? No, no more we're, questions. We're but, good. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. And thank you for putting all those those links in there as well. Um, yeah. There's. I mean, there, there's uh, uh, Jenny. Also, I think maybe share the link from Heritage BC that shows all yes. the Chinese Canadian historic sites in BC, which is a really interesting map, and it's it's a bit interactive as well. Um, it's just you know. It, it's the, the history, the Chinese Canadian history in BC is long and deep and rich, and uh, there's just so much for us to learn. Um, okay, well, I think what I'm going to do then is flip my camera around and we can say goodbye. I'm going to um, certainly. We have a question. Oh, okay. Can the ex mayor speak to what he has done while he was in office? Oh, okay. Putting you on the spot. That, that was like uh, 12 years ago since I left office. I was in office for nine. And, uh, you know, we, at that time, we were dealing with downtown revitalization. We actually, uh, we needed an arena that has, that, that was uh, finally constructed, built, and operated. Uh, we were dealing with homeless situation at that time. Um, we, we work on a blueprint for dealing with uh, homelessness, addictions, and and uh, and treatment. So, you know, there there were all sorts of things. And you know, as the mayor, you actually deal with so many different areas. And as long as you could actually uh, try to listen to people and help people, hopefully you've done uh, a job. And then you pave the way to the for the for the next uh, council to 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 complete their their mission. Thank you, Alan. Thanks for that question. Um, and I, I would also add that uh, Alan, in his capacity as the board chair of Victoria Chinatown Museum Society right now, is working really hard um, to actually create some type of, uh, we're partnering to try to come up with um, creative ways to, um, to share Chinatown history and culture, but also um, uh, really uh, encouraging people's participation in that process. So it's a really, really huge endeavor. We really hope that people will support that. Thank you, Zui. Is it, where can people find out about that? Is there a website, links or anything you could share? Um, Alan's um, Victoria Chinatown Museum Society has a preliminary website. Okay. And uh, we have ongoing projects together. We will share on our website as well. Right. As much as we can. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Zui. All right, Jenny, are we good? We just have one more question um, was, do you have any kinds of websites for eighth graders writing reports? Um, but yes. I think if yes. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> yes. Those, those learning portal links, there is quite a bit in there that would be appropriate for grade eights. Um, and so, Jenny, there was those three pathways related to Chinese yes. Canadian. Uh, yes, they're in the chat. And uh, so we'll share those on Facebook as well. Excellent question. Glad to have students and seniors and everybody from all over the place. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to distance from Mr. Lowe back there and we'll say goodbye to you. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. Happy <laughs> Thank Lunar you New Year on Just Friday. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs>